Well, it looks like y'all had a really good time looking up pictures of rockets on the internet. You found some really cool rocket pictures. Your drawings of rocket parts were well done, and you did a really nice job of identifying the key parts of rockets. The objective of this short video is to explain the parts of rockets and to find the names we use for each part. In engineering, we don't like to call something a thingamabob or a whatchamacallit. We like to use precise names for things so there's never any confusion. If we don't have a common language for things, it's easy to make mistakes, and engineers don't like making mistakes. So let's talk about rocket parts. The first rocket I want to talk about is the V-2 military rocket. The V-2 was built by the German Army during World War II. It was the first long-range guided missile or rocket. The V-2 was 14 meters tall, or about the height of seven and a half persons. Here is a drawing of the V-2 showing the parts inside the rocket. At the top of the rocket is the nose cone. The nose cone is pointed to be aerodynamic and help the rocket fly smoothly through the air. The outside structure of the rocket is called the frame or the body. Attached to the tail of the frame are the fins. The nose cone, the frame, and the fins make up the structural system of the rocket. Inside the nose cone, there is room for stuff we want to launch into air or into space. Since the V-2 was a military rocket, it had explosives in the nose. The nose cone also had room for the guidance system, which controlled the flight of this rocket. We call the things we're intending to launch into the space or into air the payload or the payload system. The payload could be a satellite, scientific instruments, or even people. The V-2 rocket used a liquid fuel system. So just behind the payload system was a fuel tank. And just behind that was a liquid oxygen tank. The fuel and the oxygen are connected to a pump which pushed them into the combustion chamber of the motor where they were ignited. The hot gas is passed out of the nozzle end of the rocket and that pushed the rocket forward. The fuel and oxygen tanks pump combustion chamber, and nozzle all together make up the propulsion system of the rocket. So the three main systems of any rocket are the structural system, which holds the whole rocket together, the payload system, which carries the things we're interested in putting into the sky or into space, and the propulsion system, which provides energy to push the rocket off the ground. A model rocket is different than a commercial or military rocket, but it has the same basic components. Here you see a cutaway drawing showing the parts of a model rocket like the one you'll be designing and building. It has a nose cone, a body tube, and fins just like the V2. It also has launch lugs which we use to control the flight of the rocket during liftoff. These parts make up the structural system of our model rocket. Inside the body tube are a shock cord to connect the nose cone to the rest of the rocket a parachute or streamer used to recover the rocket safely, and recovery wadding used to protect the contents from hot gases of the engine. The rocket you will be launching will also carry an altimeter, which will measure how high your rocket flies, as well as how fast and how long the flight lasts. These parts make up the payload system of your model rocket. Your rocket will use a solid propellant engine, which will be held in place by an engine block in the front and an engine clip in the back. Together, these parts make up the propulsion system of your model rocket. So, your model rocket looks a lot like a commercial or military rocket. It has a structural system, a payload system, and a propulsion system. The big differences are your model rocket is much smaller than rockets like the V-2, your payload consists of instrumentation and recovery devices instead of explosive, and your propulsion system uses solid propellants instead of liquid propellants. Before we go, I briefly want to talk to you about rockets with no fins. I'm sure in your hunt for different kinds of rockets, you saw a lot of rockets without fins, like the Titan II rocket, or the SpaceX Dragon rocket, which just took two astronauts to the International Space Station. Many modern rockets don't use fins to help them fly straight. 
they use a system called thrust vectoring, which is much more complicated than fins. We don't use thrust vectoring with model rockets, but if you're interested in how it works, do some internet research and see what you can find out about it. Well, I hope that explains all the different parts of a rocket and the names we use for them. You should now be qualified to talk like a rocket scientist, or even better, a rocket engineer. <laughs>